So I just got home from work, and I mean, well, that was three hours ago. Um, but one of the first things I did when I got home from work was I turned on a movie, and the movie that I turned, that I turned on to watch was To To Kill a Mockingbird, and um, I haven't I saw the movie and I read the book ten years ago. Um, ten years ago, I was a sophomore in high school, um, and in my tenth grade honors English class, I read. The book, and when I saw, and I saw the movie in class, and I did a project on it, and all that stuff. Um, so I was kind of saw it, I saw it on Netflix, and you know I wanted to watch it, so I turned it on, and it was honestly it brought back a lot of a lot of memories of seeing of seeing the movie and everything, and read, and, read, and reading the book, and all these different things that I was thinking about, you know, and just you know it's just it just is a great it's a great movie. It's one of those. It's one of those few occasions where the movie is as great as the book is. <clears throat> so, I want to talk about that a little bit. Now, if you haven't seen the movie or read the book, I would I would not recommend watching this because it's going to be like a spoiler kind of thing. Um, but, um, this is, um, I think, set in like the 30s or 30s, I believe. I could be wrong though, um, but pretty much there's um, these two kids, um, Jem and Scout. A girl, the the uh, Jem is the boy, Scout is a girl. Her name is isn't, isn't really Scout. It's like Jean Jean Louise or something like that. Um, and then the, there's the dad, whose name is Atticus Finch, of course. Um, Atticus Finch is a lawyer. He is a def he's a he is a defense lawyer, um, and pretty much what happens is he is asked to to take on a case where a black man is said to have raped a white girl. So that, as you can imagine, in those times <clears throat> where things were set in a certain way, that. Um, if any black person did anything bad against a white person, that's bad, especially if it's a black man against a white girl. Um, a black man ra raping a white girl, that's a big, huge thing. Um, and, a, and of course, you know, Atticus Finch, you know, accepting the case to, to defend this black man, who's, whose name is Tom Robinson. And um, <clears throat> so there's that, there's that going on, first off. Secondly, there's this house um, that the kids that that, that um, Jem and Scout and this one other kid that's that lives in a different house named Dill, Dylan. Um, they are scared of this house, which has a guy named Mr. Radley and his son named Boo, named Boo, Boo Radley, um, and pretty much they are scared of Boo Radley because they've heard stories about how. Boo Radley was um, cutting the was cutting paper for a, for a scrapbooking and st stabbed somebody with a stabbed I think his father with a uh, scissors. So they were trying to and they had, they were th th they were thinking about all these stories about how Boo, how Boo Radley looked and all this stuff and were like scared of him. But they would still try and like creep out to the house and like try and um, get a get a look at him. Um, so that was that, and they, had, you know, we're tr trying to think about it. We're trying to like, you know, see him as, and see him and stuff. Um, so I guess why I love this movie, why I love this movie so much, um, is partly because of the, of the of the title, "To Kill a Mockingbird." Now, what that title means is like is talking is talking about when Atticus was a, was a like a fourteen year old and he got his first gun. His father said that he can shoot tin cans. He can shoot all the birds. He can, he can shoot all. He can shoot all the, all the all all the jay birds he wants, but to never but to never shoot a mockingbird because a mockingbird only does only does one thing: sings and makes beautiful music for everybody to hear. That's all he does, and so it is a sin to kill a to kill a a mockingbird. So, um, now that kind of comes into play later towards the end of, of the story um, <clears throat> so it's kind of I mean I guess as to there's not really like a 
philosophical standpoint here is that like I mean, most of the stuff that I read, like by Vonnegut stuff, and there's normally there's I mean, well, some sort of some, some sort of philosophical standpoint, but it's just really it's a nice story and kind of um, shows you how backwards the whole racism thing was, <clears throat> um, and how good of him, and how and and what and what a good man really is. Atticus Finch is a good man. He's a great man. If I ever want to be a, a, a good man, there's two people I want to sort of be. It's either Jesus or Atticus Finch. <laughs> those, those two those two men are great men, great men in history. You know, even though Atticus Finch was a fictional character. Um, so what happens is the daughter who was who was supposedly raped by Tom Robinson, male Ewell, um, was, um, and her father Bob Bob Ewell, uh, pretty much confronts Atticus and is like pissed off at him for for taking the case and defending this um, this black guy who supposedly raped his daughter, so he's really pissed off and everything. And um, calls him a nigger lover and all this stuff. Um, and what happens is they they um, they go to. There's a lot of different things that, that that happens, but I'm just trying to highlight a few things. They go to trial, and um, a lot of people different. A lot of different people take take the stand. Mayel Ewell takes the stand, and um, <clears throat> pretty much shows that she is a total liar. Like, when you see her in the movie take the stand, you can just tell that she's lying through her teeth. Like, and pretty much when Tom Robinson, ta when, when Tom Robinson takes a stand, you, you kind of show that the whole thing was kind of a setup. Um, that, you know, Mayella was trying to, like, come on to him. Um, and they were trying to, like, almost, in a way, trying to, like, catch him or whatever and and trying to like lie and trying to get him in jail um, and as for what really happened there is a little shady um, so what happens is in the closing arguments in the trial well pretty much what you know everybody's crowded in this in this courtroom people on the bottom and there's a uh, um, a level above where people can look down on the on the courtroom. People are just packed in there, watching this trial. Um, and then Atticus has closing arguments where the speech he makes is just just amazing. It's a great speech. It's just like it's awesome to read. If I if I recall reading it ten ten years ago, um, I can't believe it's, it seems difficult to believe that it was ten years ago that I that I last read that. Hope that I can get it at some point and read it, read it again. Um, but um, it just it just uh, is amazing to see his speech, um, and it, it's like he is talking about how this case should never have come to trial, and if you have any moral fiber, then you should. Then that he's basically speaking to the jury in his closing arguments. Thing that if you have any moral fiber in your body, then you will, then you will rule this man not guilty. And he's trying, and he's making this wonderful, amazing speech, and is just really just pulling it off and having a great speech. I just, I just love it. It's just great. This movie is this movie, and the book. I remember getting like getting all like you know, you know, emotional and just really happy reading reading that book. Um, But uh, it just is a great speech. And after a while, um, the jury comes back, and you think, when when the when the jury comes back, you think, you I mean I thought at first, they have to see that this man could not cannot cannot have done this. First of all, the man's left left arm is useless, so he's could hardly have beaten her and choked her and raped her in the way that, in the way that he that he did. I mean he's he could have done some of it but not to that extent. 
Um, he, could, he, could, he, could, he could hardly have held the woman down and raped her. I don't think that's possible to hold a woman down with one hand. That's just, I think that seems, it seems mo like remotely possible, but un unlikely to me. So, um, it's just as, oh, and they, then the, the, jury com the jury comes back and they rule him guilty, but the jury is an all white jury, all white jury. So when you when they come back with a guilty verdict, you're like, yeah, yeah, I see it. All white jury. Guilty. Sending the black man to prison. So it's just a. After that, you know, court is adjourned, and they take Tom Robinson. And as they're taking him out of the court, Attic is like, hey, I will go see your your wife Helen tomorrow. We have a chance at a. Appeal, and he's telling him, "Hey, this is this is this is this is this is not over. We have a good chance at a appeal to get you out of this." So then, Atticus is the only one left in the court besides the people in the in the in the level in, in the level above, and he's just kind of standing there, and the whole moment is just solemn. It's the best word to best word to 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 describe that that whole moment is just solemn. Solemn and melancholy and just sad, and it's just kind of is a really sad, really sad thing. And everybody, the the reverend, including his uh, two his two kids and the kid Dylan, and a ton of, ton of people are just staring down at him with just a solemn look. And it's just, and they're also like you know, you know, honoring him and adoring him for what he's done for this honorable thing that he's done for this for this man um, so then they all go home and uh, the sheriff tells Atticus that um, tells Atticus that um, that uh, Tom Robinson had died they were taking him to apparently a safekeeping prison in Ab in what in some place called Abbotsville, and Tom got loose and started just like running for his life, and one of the cops were trying to shoot him to wound him, but then accidentally shot him and killed him. So then he came and told his fan and told Tom's family, and just another very sad moment. And then that asshole Bob. Bob Ewell, the father of the girl who was supposedly raped, comes behind him, spits him in the face, and Atticus is just like, you know, after being just spit on like that, takes a, his uh, egg chips, wipes his glasses in his face, gets in the car, drives away. Now, at first I thought he was going to, like, punch him. But that man is just a good, honorable, upright, moral man, morally upright man, and I just, wow, like, that's just, like, if anybody spit me in the face, I would punch them out. I don't, you know, I don't care if they're bigger than me, stronger than me, you know, unless, unless, unless it was a woman or a child, <laughs> if, a, if a man who was not, who, who was not stable spit on me, I would I'd punch him. So that's just me. Um, but that man just, Atticus just wiped his glasses in his face, got in his car, and drove away. So that's what happened there. And then later, after this, you know, in, in uh, October, which was a, a few months later, um, when Jem and Scout were leaving a, a, a uh, Halloween pageant, this attacker comes in, like, is like attacking Jem. And is like trying to wring his arm off, pretty much, and throws scout throws scout aside. And pretty much what happens is you see this other person come, and this this attacker dies. This person carries Gem out away, and then Scout takes off her takes off her Kirk costume and follows him. So it seems kind of it seems kind of like a sketchy sketchy thing. 
them keep it they were looking for 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 Boo Radley this whole time and there was this hole in this tree where <clears throat> that, that that was in front of Boo Radley's um or the uh the uh Radley's house that Jem had found on all on different occasions all these different things in like a watch two card figures um a pocket knife all these different things that he kept in this box um and you just could tell from all these different things that Boo was a good, you know, a good person with a real heart, and you know, was a good person who was worth who was worth meeting. And Jem, at one point, showed all these stuff, all these things to Scout. <clears throat> and then what's funny? It's kind of funny, but still scary. That as soon as Jem finds the two carved figures, Mister Radley comes up with a mean face and with. Um, with uh, cement, I think, or putty, fills that hole. Like with his mean face, fills that fills that hole, and they just run, they just run away. <laughs> but then, what you find out is that Bob Ewell was the one who was attacking the kids, and Jim got like knocked out. And was just, you know, was really was pretty, but was pretty badly hurt. And Scout was fine. Um, and uh, it turns out that Boo Radley killed Bob, killed Bob Yule. So, so they were kind of playing with the idea of whether Jem killed Bob, and then Atticus was like trying to. Get a clear-cut case of self of self of self-defense here, as to as to avoid any charges being pressed or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and the sheriff was going to tell everybody and make it like make it like this whole story of let the dead let the dead bury their own dead. You know that Bob Ewell fell on his own knife as to keep Boo Radley out of being out of for being out of from having charges pressed on him. So then after that, you know, it's the whole story is just that Bob Ewell accidentally killed himself and Boo Radley didn't do it. So that was as to keep Boo Radley from not getting charges pressed on him. And after that, Scout said to her father, that would be like killing a mockingbird, wouldn't it? Because Boo Radley is just like a mockingbird in that he doesn't do anything but good things. So I'm sorry I've been like ranting like this, but uh, I just love that. I love, I love the story. It's just a great story. So there's not a whole lot of philosophical stuff going on here, and that's what I, what I usually do. But there's just a lot about moral uprightness, what it means to be an honorable, good man, and what it means to be a good person in general. What, what, what it means to be a, a mockingbird, really. Um, so let me know what you, what, what you, what you think about the story.